On today's show, Elon Musk confirms that the Tesla pickup reveal will take place on November 22nd. Kawasaki showcases a very interesting electric ninja street fighter it's working on. And the energy range of electric motorcycles get longer legs for the 2020 model year. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi folks, it's good to be back in the studio after a week of travelling. I was at a pre-launch event in Germany that I can't talk about yet, but you are going to love what I saw and it's coming soon. Uh, but don't worry, we have lots of stuff I can talk about today, so let's get on with it. It's official. The wait to see what Tesla's cyberpunk pickup will look like is nearly over, with Elon Musk confirming this week via Twitter that the reveal will take place in LA on November 21st, or November 22nd if you're in New Zealand. That coincides with the LA Auto Show, but the actual reveal won't be at the event. Instead, it will take place at SpaceX's facilities in Hawthorne. The date of the reveal also coincides with the film Blade Runner, a favourite of Musk's, which takes place in November 2019. Sadly, we don't have an invite to the reveal and it clashes with a pre-existing commitment again, so sorry, we won't be there. Volkswagen has officially begun production of its ID3 electric car at its Weichau production facility in Lower Saxony, Germany. While the ID3 won't hit dealer lots just yet, the start in series production marks the transition of the first Volkswagen factory from internal combustion engine production to EV production. To date, more than 35,000 customers have placed deposits with their dealers to get an ID3, and deliveries will begin next year. According to registration data published this week, there's a new favourite among Norwegian car drivers, the 2020 Audi e-tron. In total, 873 e-trons were registered, equating to a massive 8.3% of all new car sales during the month of October. While the Tesla Model 3 dropped to a 1.3% market share of Norway's new car sales last month, it still leads Norway's charts for the year, and EV sales now dwarf internal combustion engine ones. Kawasaki posted its latest teaser video this week in a series of videos focusing on an all-electric variant to the Ninja Street Fighter that it says has been in development for many, many years. The short video shows the all-electric prototype on the track and lets slip some interesting things, like the fact it's retaining its gearbox, seems to have DC quick charging fitted, Chidemo on the prototype, and features a neat thumb-activated regenerative braking control that acts a little like the paddle on the Chevrolet Bolt EV. It's certainly coming to market, we just don't know when yet. Porsche has revealed a brand new specialist insurance product for drivers of the Taycan sports sedan, as well as plug-in hybrid variants of its Cayenne and Panamera plug-in hybrids. Porsche offering bespoke insurance products to customers isn't exactly new, but this new Taycan policy is tailored to Taycan owners and includes coverage for battery packs, charging stations, and what Porsche says is a mobility guarantee. It also includes full new-for-old coverage for replacement battery packs in the event that they are damaged in an accident. Tesla's 100 kilowatt hour battery pack has long been its largest capacity electric car pack for a number of years. But this week, Elon Musk confirmed via Twitter that a new, larger capacity battery pack is on the way. Answering a question about the upcoming triple motored Plaid Model S, Musk confirmed that the Plaid Model S would use a larger capacity battery pack. This means longer range Teslas are just around the corner. What capacity should we expect? Well, I'm thinking 120 kilowatt hours is a good bet. The Hyundai Ioniq has just received a mild range update for the 2020 model year, taking it to an official EPA-approved 170 miles per charge from its 38 kilowatt hour onboard battery pack. While that's not the longest range out there, the 2020 Ioniq EV, while slightly less efficient than the 2019 model, is still one of the most efficient electric cars you can buy today. Other tweaks for the year include a fully refreshed interior, new, larger touchscreen display and driver coaching system. Tesla has yet again tweaked pricing for its Model 3, this time increasing the US price for its Model 3 long range by $500. This gives us a total price of $48,490 and making similar changes around the world for other markets. But it's not just the price that's going up. 
the official EPA range is going up to 322 miles per charge, so that tiny price increase really shouldn't worry anyone. At the same time, the 2020 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus has just received its new EPA range ratings, increasing its range per charge from 240 miles in 2019 to 250 miles for 2020. This makes it the most efficient EV on sale in the process. Volkswagen has announced the name of the concept car we'll see unveiled in LA next week. Called the ID Space Vision Wagon concept, Volkswagen says it previews a production EV with nearly 600 kilometers of range that will go on sale in a few years' time. This vehicle does appear to be different to the ID4, which we all believed was an electric SUV, and says Volkswagen will be sold in both the US and China, among other markets. Interestingly, though, it said each market will get a subtly different variant. Like GM, Ford has been busy in negotiations with the Union of Automotive Workers for the last couple of months, and this week we learned via leaked documents that its latest round of negotiations have included cementing down where future models will be made. And while it's not publicly known yet where its Mustang-inspired electric vehicle will be built, Ford's negotiations have confirmed that its Dearborn, Michigan plant will receive $700 million of investment to ready it to produce next year's hybrid F-150 pickup truck. The same plant will make the all-electric F-150 Ford has confirmed is in the works for a few years' time. Like many other motorcycle companies, all-electric motorcycle firm Energica used the annual EICMA show last week to unveil its new 2020 lineup. Debuting this year is the EVA Rebel, which features a brand new 21.5 kilowatt hour battery pack that's good for a claimed combined range of 230 kilometers per charge. Existing models, including the SASA 9 and Ego, also get the new battery pack as an optional extra. I cannot wait to try one out. And finally, New Zealand has become the latest country to set new targets for its emissions, committing to reducing its total carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. There is one loophole, though. The methane from biogenic sources, that's animals and plants to you and me, will be exempt from those targets. But PM Jacinda Ardern said that she was proud of how far the parliament has come on climate change policies since arguing if it was real or not 10 years ago. Well done, New Zealand. And here's hoping other countries follow suit. And didn't you like the OK Boomer? I did. And on that fantastic story, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, please do send it our way. Make sure you hit that notification bell too so you don't miss out on our next episode, especially as our very own Mark Yates just spent some time with the Fuso Ecanto electric delivery truck. He loved it and I think you're going to love it too. And of course, while you're at it, why you've got a browser open, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is easy to make the change and if you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand go zero emission long before that new 2050 goal. I'll be back soon with a new episode, but until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.